So back in the day in SVR 09, 10, 11, and WWE 12, we used to have a little mode in our games called Road to WrestleMania, a mode that every year gave us a bunch of unique original storylines to play out with some wrestlers, and over the course of 4 games we had 20 different storylines that were actually fun. Yeah, before the Baron Blades of the world and whoever these two jackasses are, we actually had fun in our story modes. You went from defending the streak to ending the streak, you had MVP forming his own country, to zombies and masked men and time machines as crazy and as wild as wrestling storylines could possibly be. And yes, were they unrealistic and dumb sometimes? Sure, but hey, we still had fun. But that doesn't mean you didn't have your fair share of realistic storylines that were better written than their real life counterparts. So I thought, why not go back and take a look back at these stories? Now, like I said before, there have been 20 storylines, so if I forget something, I'm sorry. But anyway, these are, in my opinion, the best Road to WrestleMania storylines in the WWE games. First up, none other than the legendary Better Than Utopia from SVR 2009. MVP is an interesting guy. He has one of the most fire themes in wrestling wrestling history, he had an awesome entrance and looked like a damn Power Ranger, and somehow two of the biggest pushes of his career took place in video games. Better than Utopia was legendary. At first, it's just another typical Super Cena storyline. He's out here doing his thing, going to tribute to the troops, putting on a show for them, pretending he's the marine and shit. While over there, he becomes best friends with a soldier named Tony, and at tribute to the troops, Cena beats MVP. Of course. So MVP gets salty about the loss and blames America, and says he's leaving the US of A and that he deserves better and he basically hates America. He doesn't actually leave, instead gathers a bunch of wrestlers and makes his own country. What does he call it? Better than Utopia. They got a flag and everything, Umaga was the chief of security, William Regal was a secretary of foreign affairs, and MVP was of course, the president. Hip hip hooray! So Better Than Utopia basically run raw and nobody is safe. Remember Cena's best friend for life, Tony? Well, GG to him cause even he gets clapped. Yes, they out here beating up an injured US soldier. So now it's time for John Cena to save the day. The storyline is just hilarious. The matches are contested in Better Than Utopia rules, meaning things like Cena can't win with a 3 count, instead whenever he wants to pin someone from better than Utopia, he needs a 5 count. It's an awesome story and I personally just love it. It's so outrageous and so random, it's just hilarious, especially because this was one of the first few Road to Wrestlemania stories. When we found out about Road to Wrestlemania, we didn't really know what to expect, and then all you see is better than Utopia. You gotta love it. Next up, Rey Mysterio from SVR 2011. Rey Mysterio for his entire career has been the lovable fan favorite, the GOAT. Like I've never met anyone who actually hated Rey Mysterio. Yo, growing up I knew kids who legit cried when Kali squished his head and blood just poured out. Everyone just loves this man, how can you not? And he has never been the heel, always the good guy. So then you start the story and Rey Mysterio gets into a car crash and he doesn't know what happened. He's lost, he's confused, and Jack Swagger comes out of nowhere and becomes best friends with Rey Mysterio, and Jack Swagger is obviously the heel, so he turns Rey Mysterio from the fun loving little guy to apparently the biggest heel in the company. Yeah, we got heel Rey Mysterio in this storyline, something we have never seen in real life and probably never will. So Rey is just healing it up, being a douchebag to the Bellas, you even got Evan Bourne telling him, you change Rey, I don't even know who you are anymore. Rey is a full blown heel, and then eventually after a few weeks it comes out that Jack Swagger is the one who hit you in the first place. So then Rey actually has a choice. So you as Rey Mysterio have the option, hey, should I forgive Jack Swagger or should I not? If you forgive him, you heal it up even more or you can go back to being good old Rey Rey. How can you not enjoy a good old fashioned amnesia storyline that results in Rey Mysterio being a heel? As an honorable mention, I gotta shout out Mickey James Road to WrestleMania from SVR 2010. As a kid, I didn't think I would enjoy this. What the hell was I gonna do with a Mickey James Road to WrestleMania? but they actually went all out and they were mad creative with it. This featured a women's royal rumble 8 years before we had one in real life, and the overall storyline was awesome because it was the new generation of Mickey vs Trish. Now Mickey James was Trish Stratus and Natalia was a psycho crazy obsessed fan like how Mickey James was back in 2006. Another honorable mention is Edge from SVR 2010. It was such a typical Edge storyline. He's a sleazeball who manipulates Maria, the Smackdown general manager, and just basically runs Smackdown through Maria and he does whatever he wants. It's always fun playing the heel because we're so used to being Superman in these video games, the good guy always winning and doing everything right, but here it was just fun finessing the system like only Edge could. But back to the best. 
Christians from SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. Christian was and is a fan favorite. Dating back to the mid 2000s, so many fans just wanted to see Christian finally get that main event push and become a world heavyweight champion. Well, in SVR 2011, we finally got to live it out, and this was before his feud with Randy Orton. So before he could do it in real life, we got to see it in the video game. What makes it so awesome is the involvement of his best friend Edge. So Christian was on ECW and gets traded to SmackDown, where he goes on to win the Money in the Bank. And since Edge is also on SmackDown, you get that classic Edge and Christian humor. Fourth wall, breaks, dumb jokes, everything. And of course, you can make a time machine. Yeah, you can run around, get some parts, and you actually build a time machine. Which is cool because you can go back in time in either Christian storyline, but you can also go back in time to the other storylines and do them again. So remember in the Rey Mysterio Amnesia storyline, you had the choice to either forgive Jack or you don't. So say you did forgive him, when you're playing the Christian one, you can go back in time and do the opposite. The storyline has everything, it's obviously hilarious but you can also make it into something a little more serious, it's your choice. So you're the money in the bank holder right? Do you want to cash in on the Raw champion Shawn Michaels or do you want to risk your friendship with Edge? Hey, Edge. Dude remember these? We were completely styling back in the day. I was thinking we could- Yeah, I thought you should hear it from me. I'm cashing in my money in the bank title shot. Against Shawn Michaels on the next episode of Raw. Either way, it ends with Christian main eventing WrestleMania as the World Heavyweight Champion. This storyline totally reeks of awesomeness. Versus Undertaker in SVR 2011 was another banger. It's a simple story. Wow, you're gonna go to try to beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania just like 20 other wrestlers. But just seeing week in and week out The Undertaker's crazy, insane mind games come to life in video game form was just a blast. Return of Paul Bear, the free roaming gets all messed up, you're seeing things, you're hallucinating, the lights go off. It felt like you were in your own Randy Orton vs Undertaker storyline from 2005. This was just so well made. Then you got the fan favorite brand warfare. Smackdown vs Raw featuring ECW from SVR 2010. At first it was like yo okay wow Triple H vs Cena, Smackdown vs Raw, I wonder who's gonna win. And then somehow that turned into why the hell is Big Show so overpowered. Big Show along with Miz and Morrison just run wild on Raw and Smackdown and they just hold it down for ECW. I don't think anyone expected the storyline to be this fire. And then somehow Big Show became Kratos from God of War, championship titles get destroyed, you get thrown into walls, it was awesome. That's what I miss about these storylines, see like most of these storylines have pretty simple premises. Oh, you're gonna verse The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Oh, it's SmackDown vs Raw and ECW is gonna get involved. Stuff that's been done before, but somehow every year they just make them fun and unique. So on the surface level, when you see John Cena, Triple H, Brand Warfare, you don't expect it to be that special, but it definitely was and it was super unexpected. But speaking of unexpected, that's the best way to describe the created wrestler story of Jacob Cass in WWE 12. In my opinion, the best Road to WrestleMania storyline of all time, and I have a few Feeling that a lot of you guys will share the exact same feelings. I just went over this in the WWE 12 video so if I'm repeating a lot of things I'm sorry but this is it. This is the GOAT. You start off as a NXT rookie just another wrestler and at first you're like oh this is gonna be pretty similar to SVR 2010's created wrestler role to Wrestlemania. You know pretty vanilla nothing special. Wow rookie finally makes it to the WWE. He's gonna go to Wrestlemania and win woohoo. Nah nah nah. How about the WWE gets flipped upside down, it's over, there's a war going on, we're all gonna get fired, the industry's gonna die, WCW is back and they're taking over and this time the writers at Ukes are gonna make sure that the invasion isn't botched. And yes, that's what happens, WCW takes over. Kevin Nash, Booker T, Road Warriors, so many legends and you're out here getting your ass beat week in and week out. And it's not just you, the entire WWE roster is just getting their ass beat. So you're a rookie, but yo, nah, you got to become a pro fast and over this long storyline you just get the most epic storyline in WWE game history. So as it progresses, as it comes to an end the hype just increases and increases and at the end when it's time for the final showdown it's like some Avengers Infinity War and Endgame type match. Which by the way takes place at Starcade. It was legendary and even though I'm a mark for Smackdown shut your mouth here comes the pain SVR 05 to 08 I can't help but say 
say that this is the best storyline in WWE game history. What other storyline gave you this build up? What other storyline at the end you were like, holy shit, I'm going into war. Yeah, I had fun with all those other games, but for some reason with this storyline at the end, it felt like I had just experienced something amazing. Road to WrestleMania was just an awesome mode. Every year from SVR09 until WWE 12, there was just this hype. Like, yo, I wonder what we're gonna get in this year's Road to WrestleMania. And every year, it just got better and better, and I miss it. I miss it dearly. They took risks, they took chances, they gave wrestlers amnesia, we had time machines, and now we just get some BS my career, and it's like, what am I supposed to do with this? These were fun times, and it's crazy to think that for some reason, we're probably not gonna get this back for a good while. Like, how hard is it? You make storylines for wrestlers in a video game, and you let us play it out. But no, 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 here's Baron Blade. Yo, imagine how fun it would be if we got like throwback Road to WrestleManias. Like imagine in WWE 2K22, you had a Road to WrestleMania for current stars like Roman Reigns and Becky Lynch, but now since we have the biggest rosters ever and so many arenas, imagine a made up Road to WrestleMania 18 for Stone Cold Steve Austin, or a made up Road to WrestleMania for Kurt Angle, WrestleMania 20, you know what I mean? There's so many things they could do, but for some reason, they get amnesia like Rey Mysterio and forget how to make a video game. <laughs> But yeah, these were fun times, so now I have a few questions for you guys. 1. What is your favorite Road to WrestleMania storyline? Which ones are the ones you remember all these years later? And 2. Would you guys be down for me to play some of these? And if so, which ones? Anyway, thank you guys for watching, follow the Twitter and the Instagram. Summer school is officially over, so your boy is back on the grind. Expect a lot of content from here on out. Thank you guys so much, have a good day, good night whenever you're watching. I'll see you guys later.